Good morning. It's so good to see you in the house of the Lord. We have some um, of our members that are off at Camp Keystone at the conference center there. They are either at our young adult retreat. Um, we have Erica and Roger there. And then we have our Bringle Holiness Retreat. We have several members of our church that some of them are teaching, Colonel Jewett is teaching, and then we have other members of our church that are there attending the holiness retreat, and their task is to learn as much as they can so that they can come back here and teach us all of that they've learned. And so they have quite a big task, and I'm so, and they were thrilled to go. They were thrilled to go. They were packed with warm clothes. Um, so I'm so I can't wait for them to get back. So be in prayer for them as they drive back here this afternoon. Well, we don't have that many announcements. We still have all our programming is uh, is put on pause as their renovations going on in the main building, and also back here you see some renovations that are happening here in the chapel as well. So our uh, worship service is next Sunday at 11. Um, we will meet with some of our leaders to see what the plan is for next for these next couple of weeks as our core goes through our renovations. So if our core leaders be on the lookout for some possible times that we'll talk to you about our now, about um, our core activities. If you are able to serve food, um, we had some, we've had some changes in canteen, but if you have time at 11 or at five every day, we do have, um, we are serving food or serving now boxes of resources for the community. If you're available to do that, please contact my husband, Captain Israel, for him to put you on the schedule. Well, welcome and let's praise the Lord for another day together. Good morning. As we read together a call to worship to prepare our hearts and our minds for worship, I'll ask that you respond. God is our miss formed us by God's own people. We need not fear. God's divine power has given us everything. We are called by God's glory. We are called by God's goodness. Come to the Lord who will surround you with God's own righteousness. Open our hearts and our spirit so that we may faithfully follow you amen i my prayer is that god will prepare our hearts and uh, we would be ready for what he has for us this morning amen amen you're gonna see some new faces around you know we've been recognizing some of our heroes that are helping us throughout the last few weeks you know if you remember unless if you're living under a rock <laughs> There was a bad guy, his name was Eon, and he decided to visit us and messes things out, you know, but reinforcement came, so I want to invite all of those for the incident command team, canteen workers, uh, Miss Chickies that have been in there, Mr. Chaplin, everybody that has been helping us throughout the next few weeks, if you please stand and let us greet you and, and thank you for your service here in Port Charlotte. You know, that's the third crew that has come in, and who knows, maybe maybe it'll be the last one. Let's pray, right? So if so again, we're thankful. We're not be we're not never gonna be able to do without the help of uh, some of the crews that are coming, our soldiers, our volunteers, our donors. Uh, so we, that's the reason why we do what we do, to be able to help our community as much as we can. So if you please, if you're able to stand, please do so. Uh, we sing better when we're when we're standing. You know, join us. You see that, again, we got reinforcement today. We paid the best money that we could find <laughs> to get, you know, a new drummer and a new percussionist. Okay, so if you like them, then we can say stay. If you don't like them, we'll boo them out of the stage. Yeah. No. <laughs> Nothing but the blood of Jesus. That's what can wash away our sins. Amen. Thank you. 
Sing the chorus again.
is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. You are here. You may be seated. It's wonderful when, uh, when we build houses to our Lord, places of worship like this where we can come. And even though this one is slightly damaged from the hurricane, this is still God's house where God's people come to worship him and meet with him and hear from him, speak to him. Um, First Peter, the third chapter, says that the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are attentive to our prayers. Now, if I understand that right, that means that you and I this morning have the eyes and the ears of the Lord. <laughs> Can you imagine that? That almighty God, his eyes on you, his eyes on me, and his ear, he's listening to you and he's listening to me and that's why this is a special time each time we come together for worship when we come to the Lord in prayer this is when we practice our faith by by speaking to the Lord and listening for his response uh, that's an act of faith and I'm thankful that I'm with brothers and sisters this morning who share that faith with me that we have the privilege of speaking to the Lord and of being attentive and listening to what he says to us. So this morning as we pray, I'd like to invite anyone that would like to just to lift a prayer to the Lord this morning. Whatever's on your heart, just a prayer to the Lord, knowing that his ear is attentive to your prayer and my prayer. And then after we uh, after we share some prayer together, then I'll close in prayer. Let's bow our heads and hearts together, and let's pray to God, our Heavenly Father. Oh, God, we thank you this morning for waking us up on this Sunday morning and allowing us to come to your house with your people. And right now, Lord, we just want to speak to you from our heart. We just want to say what we are thinking about you this morning. We, we love you, and so we pray, Father, that you would listen to every prayer that is spoken in this place this morning.
Yesu Yesu. Someone else. Father God, I thank you this morning for every prayer that has been lifted up from every heart. Uh, some of them have been audible, some of them have been aloud, but others have prayed from their heart in this quietness, and Lord, you have heard every prayer, and I thank you that you are attentive to us, that you pay attention to us. I thank you, Lord, that um, you're always communing with your children and so we thank you that that's true here in this place this morning as it is for many many other places where your children are gathered today to worship you and hear from you we thank you for your presence at camp keystone this morning with uh, many of our congregation we pray your blessing upon their gathering that the holy spirit would come upon them and under the, the subject of being holy as, as you are holy, Father, that they will come away with renewed vision and renewed spirit and, uh, and ready to serve you in, in uh, new and exciting ways. We thank you, Lord, for this worship service and pray that everything that will be done will bring honor and glory to you, that as your word is lifted up, Father, that we would be drawn to it and that our, our hearts would be open to it and what you feed us today from your word, Father, will be like a spiritual feast today. We thank you for um, this uh, gathering, for one another, and pray that your love would reign in our hearts so that the peace of Jesus would, uh, would always be present in our congregation. For we ask and pray this through Jesus Christ our Lord, for his sake. Amen. This is the time where we get to worship the Lord with our tithes and offering, with our possessions, with whatever we have. Um, 
many, many years ago when I was a new Christian, my first officer mentioned to me one of the reasons why he always encouraged me to give is that for us to not grow attached to material things. As you can tell, some of the material things were here last week, and they're no longer here. Some of the material things from your testimony, uh, as I heard so many of you all sharing, you know, it was in your hands, and it was no longer in your hands. Uh, and that's proof that we're not supposed to be attached to those things. We're not to be supposed to be lovers of money, lover of possession. You know, what the Lord wants us to be is to be a grateful giver, to be able to be free from the necessity that we have to store treasures here on this earth, but to store treasures in heaven. So if the Lord is speaking with you today and you want to worship him with your tithes, with your offers, uh, offering, that's your time uh, as we have the two nicest. See, I'm, I'm telling you, we're sparing no expense here, just getting the best to do everything today. OK, so as they go, he, he, I'm talking about you. Don't be looking at me like that. I'm talking about you, you're the best. So say they will go around. Like I said, unfortunately, today we don't have all the live music that we usually have. So we do this quietly uh, and then we'll come back again for the doxology. So you do that side and you do this side. Would you please stand and sing with me the doxology? Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise in our creatures here below. Praise in above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. It's a beautiful choir. You may have a seat. You are? You want to do it again? Are we going to? So some of you are doing in C flat. Some of you are doing in F. Some of you are doing in G. So we're going to do it again. Okay, that's where they ask. Give to the people what the people want. All right? Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise in all creatures here below. Praise in above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Hold it. Amen. So there you go. You may have a seat. And in worship, we're also going to read God's word for our lives today. Our scripture is found in 2 Peter 1, 3 through, verse 3 through 11, all right? 2 Peter 1, verses 3 through 11, and I am reading in the New International Version. This is what the word of the Lord says. His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. 
through these, he has given us his very great and precious promise, so that through him you may participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption in this world caused by evil desires. For this reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness, knowledge, and to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, mutual affection, and to mutual affection, love. If you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But whoever does not have them is nearsighted and blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their past sins. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, make every effort to confirm your calling and election. For if you do these things, you will never stumble, and you will receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May, may God bless the reading of his word. It is amazing how humans forget things so fast. If you know a little bit about me, you know that I can't remember names of people, and I usually I forget those with two or three minutes. And you know, why do I say all this to you all the time? Because I don't want you to get offended every time that you come in and I say, remind me your name again, or have we met before? You know, that's, that's a common, you know. But it, one of the things that I love to do is I play golf. But I'm not good, okay? I'm actually pretty average. No, average is a strong word. I'm pretty bad. But when I go play golf with my father-in-law, I hope he's not watching because he's pretty bad too. So when I go play, and I like it because we don't count score. What we do is if we go and we have two boxes of, bag, of balls and we come back with one box, it was a good day. We did good. You know, if we don't even open the second box, hey, that was one of the best. You know, we don't even care about the score. But one of the things that my, my father-in-law really helps me is that he got good eyes, okay? So sometimes we're there, and if you know anything about golf, you know, they always tell you the right position, you know, how you, the, it's all about the hips, my hips don't lie, you know, and, and what do you do in the swing? And so I do all that, I watch videos online, you know, and I know that the hole is over there, so I'm like, Amy, and I hit the ball, and I'm not sure what's happening, but I always go to the right or to the left. It never goes where I want to go. So my father-in-law, he's, he's got these great eyes, and I remember that every time, it never fails. I hit the ball, we got in the golf cart, we got a general idea where the ball is, and then we go there, and I say, I call him by the rank, okay? I call him Major. So, Major, have you seen my ball? It's like, oh, I, yeah, I have seen it. It's like, where? It's like, I just can't remember. <laughs> I just can't remember what I saw. And I was like, well, that kind of defeats the purpose, right? You see, Peter realized the importance of us remembering. That's why he's writing to the Christians in, the, in several provinces, Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, to remember those that we have to remember the things that we were taught. We have to remember the things that we learn about Jesus. We have to remember the experiences that we had with Jesus. Peter states that if we continue to remind them of those things, as long as we leave those things, and he talked about verses 5 to 7, for us to remember those things are knowledge, virtue, patience, godliness, broadler kindness, and charity. You see, but Peter doesn't stop there. He gave us a reason why. Because one thing is for me to say, Mr. Carl, don't ever forget this. But Peter, he says, well, don't ever forget this because of what I'm gonna about to tell you. He's saying, because if you don't forget those things and you possess those qualities, if you have those qualities, then you're going to be effective. 
But if you don't have, verse 8 tells us that you're going to be ineffective, unproductive, and basically it will be no difference between you and a non-believer. It will be exactly no difference. But if you possess those qualities, if you remember what you were taught about Jesus, if you remember what you were learning from Scripture, if you remember, you know, think about it. I like to always look up like this. If you come to church every Sunday, you are getting 52 sermons in a year. That's not counting what you're listening on the radio, if you listen to some Christian music. That's not counting your time that you read your Bible. That's not counting the time that we're singing songs. That, I mean, so there's, there's not time, you know, so there's... Not counting the time that you hear from God in prayer. And what Peter was saying is, remember those things. Remember those things. Do you remember when they used to have those um, wristbands that say WWJD? Y'all remember what that means? What would Jesus do? Right? And then if you stop and think, why did we have there? Why that thing became so famous? Because it was a reminder. It was a reminder. Every time it's like, what would Jesus do? What would Jesus do here? What would Jesus do with this person? When we were mad and we just want to choke them, what would Jesus do? It would not be choking. What would Jesus do? But if we follow the instructions, what that Peter is saying, we're going to be fruitful. We're going to be a witness for Christ. We're going to be able to reach others for the gospel. And we'll have an impact on the kingdom. We're going to bring glory and honor to God. And the most important thing of all, we're not going to be ineffective. We're going to make an impact. But if our lives are not marked by those qualities, then there is no difference between you and a person who doesn't know Christ. There's no difference. A while, a while ago, I was in Arkansas, and I, I, I run a whole, like, um, almost like distance of marathon. And I remember that when I got back to the house, I was so thirsty. And if you're not a runner, you probably won't understand that. Sometimes when you're so thirsty, you don't really want water. You want a sugar to drink. Okay? And I remember that because I was so sweaty, and my wife always said, well, you stink when you sweat. I was like, what do you expect? Duh. I'm going to start drinking cologne now. You know? So I remember that one of the things that she says, like, go to the garage. And I remember that I went through the garage, and I saw this can of Pepsi. And I was so thirsty, so I pop it. And once I pop it, you know, usually when I pop it, psst. But when I pop it, that one, it did. That's the sound. I'm going to do it again so you can hear. No, it didn't do. Y'all, y'all, y'all not there. Don't tell me my story. It's my story, okay? You are not there. What it did was this. Oh, y'all, stop misbehaving. But I didn't pay attention because I was so thirsty. And as soon as I took one drink, I was like, ugh, this is disgusting. It was flat. And then I remember that immediately I went to the house and I got another one and and, and that was delicious. And here's the thing. Those two can of Pepsis, were identical. I couldn't tell a difference. That was can number one that I got from the garage. That was can number two that was inside the house. There was absolutely no difference until when I tasted it. And here's the thing. What, Paul, what Peter is saying here is that if we don't possess those qualities, if we're not exercising what we know about Christ, if we're not putting in our lives the teachings that we receive, then we're like that flat Pepsi. Makes no difference. There's no flavor.
Verses 9 and 10. But whoever does not have then, we'll talk about those instructions, is nearsighted and blind, forgetting what they have been cleansed from their past sins. Verse 10. Therefore, my, therefore, my brothers and sisters, make every effort to confirm your calling and election. For if you do those things, you will never stumble. Do everything to confirm. Because if not, then we're nearsighted. We're blind. Evelyn has a video, and she's going to show us in a moment. Just a 30-second video, so just get the video ready. Uh, there's no sound. Okay? When a person is nearsighted, he or she see things right in front of them, but they can't watch, they can't see anything far. If you don't know, here's another random fact about your captain. I wear contact lenses. If I take my contact lenses, my vision will be exactly what you're going to see in this video. So just take a moment and watch this video. But look what the contact does for me. But look when he goes down and he looks close to his phone again or whatever that is. See, we can kind of see okay from close. We can see okay. If I take my contact lenses, I can read what's in here. Yeah, you don't want to watch that. <laughs> that is not me. <laughs> I'll take my shirt right now and it's not me. Okay? But here's the thing. Once I take my contact lenses, I can't read those banners. If I take my contact lenses, all I'm going to see is blurry shades of color. I will not know who is who. I will not be able to see things on the screen. I will only be able to see what's in front of me. And why is Peter saying that? He's saying that because if we're nearsighted, we can only see what's in front of us. We can't see the big picture of what God has for us. When the disaster comes, we can only see what's in front of us. But we cannot see God's protection. When the disaster comes, we can only see the problem that's in front of us, but not the opportunity to bless somebody. When the problem is in front of us, we can only see that. And we do not see the big picture. We do not see that God is still in control. It's not because Eon came and hit us that God is no longer in control. He's still in control. He's still loving. He's still caring. But it's up to us to be able to have a clear vision to be able to see His blessings. The world is going to try to tell us, you know, there is nothing good on this. And here's the thing. I'm not saying to you that this is not normal. We as humans, we struggle with pain. We struggle with destruction. We struggle with not, things not being the way that we want that to be. I struggle too. And you struggle too. But what Peter is saying is if we remember those teachings, if we remember... What we learn from scripture, what we learn from sermons, what we learn from music, what we know of the character of Jesus, then we don't need to be just nearsighted. We don't need to only see, we don't need to only see what's in front of us. I'm not saying to you that when troubles come, you're not going to be sad. That's not what I'm saying. We as humans, we get sad. We get discouraged sometimes. But eventually, we'll remember what we know of Jesus. And that gives us the energy. That gives us that push. That brings comfort for us to know that God is in control. Verse 11. 
Romans 8, starting on verse 26. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the, with the glory that will be revealed in us. In the same way, the Spirit help us in our weaknesses. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us. And He who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. Verse 28. And if we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him, who has been called according to His purpose. That's encouraging. To know the God work good things to those who love Him. But if we are nearsighted, then we're going to read this verse like this. God work all good things as long as nothing happens to me. That's how we're going to read this verse. But if we remember the instructions of Jesus, if we remember what we know about him, then the way that's going to read this verse is God work all things, even in disaster, even in poverty, even in pain, even in loneliness, even in... You fill the blank of what you're going, what's going on in your life right now. He's working all things to us in good and bad to those who love him. There's a big difference. There's a big difference. You know, and then that's what they continue to say in Scripture. In addition to being nearsighted, it could be even worse. We can be blind and not even see what's in front of us. You think that's impossible to imagine, that you can forget that you've been cleansed from your sins, but this is more common than you think. You see, remembering our salvation involves more they remember the fact Jesus, remember our salvation involves more than just a feeling. It involves remembering the sacrifice that Jesus did for us in that cross. In salvation, we were cleansed, we were forgiven, we were redeemed, we were transformed, we were regenerated, and we were set apart. And Peter says in verse 9, if we forget those things, then we're blind and we cannot see far off. Chances are that every believer at some point had doubted of his or her salvation. Been there, done that. There are times when the circumstances around you could be so tough that maybe you was like, God, are you really there? And that's what the teaching comes when those moments comes that we're discouraged, that we're beat down. Remember what we know about Jesus. Remember the sacrifice that he did in the cross for us. So we're not going to be ineffective. And instead, even through the difficult times, we'll be able to be effective we'll be able to make a difference with the people around us. And when we were down, here's the thing, as when we look at us as a family, as a church, here's the thing, if I'm down, then I'll have Miss Gladys to pick me up and to show me something different. When Miss Gladys is down, we're going to have Luz to show something different. When Luz is struggling, we're going to have Colonel Marty, Marty showing something else. And it just goes on and on and on. What I'm saying is that sometimes we will doubt. And we're going to need each other to get us through. 
And what Peter's saying here, we cannot forget. Do not forget what Jesus has done for you. Do not forget the power of the Holy Spirit. Do not forget what God can do in our lives. And do not forget what God has already done in your life. Don't throw all this in the air and say, you know what? Everything is a mess right now. Forget this whole God thing. And what he's saying to the readers and for us is that do not forget what God has done for us. Stay strong. Remain strong. Stay firm. Stay put. Do not forget. You know, we used to have fences outside. Now we don't anymore. But here's the thing. Every time that I go outside and I see that fence post and the hole is still there, I know this is crazy, but that's how my mind works. Or remember that is hope. The hole is still there. We're going to put another post over there. And we're going to have another fence at some point. And maybe your mind is not just abstract as mine. But you know, in the times of this, in times of pain, in times of confusion, I need those things, those visual representations to say, yeah, I know it's chaos, but God is still here. And can I can concentrate on chaos, or I can concentrate on what God is doing around me. I can concentrate on people who still don't have power. Or I can concentrate on that scoop of food that I'm putting in that box to go to somebody that's coming to my door. I can concentrate on the holes of my chapel, or I can concentrate on having you here today. And we all have that choice. Verse 10, and we're coming to the end. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, make every effort to continue your calling and election. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. You know, I like the idea of doctrine number nine of the Salvation Army. You know, if you're new to the Salvation Army, forgive me. You know, I'll, I'll sit down with you. I'll tell you about our doctrines, okay? But doctrine number nine tells us to continue in the state of salvation depends upon continuing obedient faith. What does that mean, Captain? It means that we can't just say a prayer one day and then say, okay, God, I accept you, and just stop there. What it means is every day we renew our commitment with God. You don't put gas in your car only once, and you drive forever. You don't only have food once, and you go on with your life forever. You don't just take one shower, I hope not, and go on forever. That's a constant thing. And to continue in the state of salvation, meaning to continue to have that relationship with the Lord, we're making every effort necessary. It's an exercise. It's a routine. You know, why do you think that sometimes people say, oh, I read my Bible every morning, or I read my Bible every afternoon, or I read my Bible every lunch break, or, you know, whatever it is. Because when you becomes a routine, that becomes part of your life. But if you wake up in the morning and say, I will, read, I will spend time with the Lord wherever when I have time. And guess what? You're never going to have time. You're always going to have something <whistles> calling your attention. So when we make every effort, mean when we wake up, we're being intentional about my day. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for giving me another day. What are some opportunities that you can send my way, Lord, for me to exercise the things that I know about you? And here's something crazy, and I'm going to finish with this. You ever stop to think that Hurricane Ian can be one of those opportunities? Have you ever thought that this disaster around us right now is an opportunity for us to shine the light of God? 
Have you ever thought that people are looking at us, the people of God, for something different, for something new? For us to be able to say, yes, you know, I'm struggling, but the God that I serve got my back. Let me talk to you about this God that I serve. And if you want a reason for, why should I implement all this, Captain? Verse 11 gives you the answer. And you receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Isn't that the reason why we do what we do? That's why we do what we do. That's the difference between us in the world. You know, we're singing too, just like, you know, people sing in the world. But the reason is we're singing because we're worshiping Him. We're coming together. We could be right now any other place. But we're here because that's the difference, because we're here bonding as a family. We're here to worship Him even in the middle of the storm. We're here to worship Him even in the middle of chaos. We're here to worship Him because we need to come together to Him because we know that that's where hope comes from. That's why we do what we do. That's what keeps us from not being effective. It's what keeps us from not having a hope. That's what Scripture is saying. Remember. Remember when trouble comes. Remember when the difficult day comes your way. Remember, when you wake up in the morning, it says, like, I don't really know if I can do this today. I don't want to face what's today. Remember what you know about the character of God. And here's what I can tell you. The Lord doesn't want to hurt you. The Lord does not hate you. The Lord does not think that you're worthless. That I can tell you. The Lord loves you. The Lord has a plan for you. And that's why we worship Him. And we do not forget what the Lord is all about. Here's the thing. Me, Captain, Israel, whatever you want to call me, I may fail. I may going to do something or say something to you that's going to hurt your feelings. Not intentional. So if I ever do that to you, come and talk to me. Sometimes it will be, wasn't thinking. I said something I wasn't thinking. But I fail. And I know that sometimes some of you will fail as well. I want to believe it's not intentional. So, you know, we'll forgive. But the Lord never fails. So don't put our hope in each other. Okay? We, we encourage each other. But as we encourage each other, we put in our hope in the Lord. Amen? Amen? That's what we do what we do. I'm not saying to you that tomorrow everything's going to be honey and strawberry milkshakes. Yes. You don't like milkshake? I'll pray for you, brother. Um. But what I am saying to you is, despite what we face when we leave here today, the Lord is good. Amen? And all the time, God is good. So I'm going to invite you to pray with me. Father, we come this morning and we want to remember your goodness, remember your mercy, remember what you have done for us. Remember that even as things just blew away, homes and stuff that we have and flood the streets, and now we're having to dewalt that. Help us to remember that we know where our hope comes from. Our hope is not going to come from the adjuster, 
from the check that we may get or from other agencies that are in town. You know, we need those basic necessities, yes, but at the end of the day, we can have all the basic necessities, but if we don't have you, we're still empty. So, Father, help us to remember, yes, we have to take care of whatever we need to take care of. There's cleaning to be done. There was rebuilding to be done. There are things that we're going to have to buy again or find. But we have not lost you, Father. You're still here among us. You have not lost you when the winds were 150 miles outside. We have not lost you as the roof blew away, as trees broke down, as water came inside of our homes. You were still there. Father, help us not to be nearsighted so we're only going to be looking at those things and we're going to forget the big picture. That you remain with us, that you remain present. That you remain sitting in the throne. And you can remain in our hearts. Father, be with us. It was a great week. Help us again to look at the big blessings there is around us. And not to be so consumed with the things that we don't have. Because you are good. And you love and do us forever. We love you, Father. We thank you for this day. We thank you for the people here. We thank you for those that are watching us from home, for those that are at camp, for those that for any reason decide not to come today. Father, may them feel your presence this morning. We pray all this in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. And God's people say, Amen. Amen. Fifty-five, blessed assurance. We know this song. We know it in our hearts that God is our assurance, as we have um, heard from Captain Israel as we prayed. So I'm going to ask you to stand, and we're going to sing these verses, knowing that God is our assurance. Let's look at the words in verse number one. Je when we, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine! Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of His Spirit, washed in his blood who is washed in god's blood today in jesus blood today amen let's sing this song today blessed assurance jesus is mine we're gonna let us slow Praise him. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Next verse. Perfect submission. Perfect delight. Visions of rapture burst on my sight. Angels descending, bringing above. Echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story. This is my song. Submission, all is at rest. I am my Savior and happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above. Filled with his goodness, lost in his love. Let's
let's sing it out loud. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day as Evelyn comes to the front, those are some powerful songs that we, that words that we sang, that this is my story, no matter what I go through, okay, I'm going to be, I will submit myself to the Lord. I will be drenched in his love, right? I will know that this is my story, and I'm going to proclaim what he did for me during the storm, what he does for me every day of our life, right? That's what we're going to proclaim, we're going to sing our Savior this song of his blessings. Good morning, church. Do, you, do what you have learned and received and seen and heard in Christ, and the peace of God will be with you. And may the peace which passes all understanding guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Have a blessed week.